Today on the Mr. Maple Show, we have container gardening with Japanese maples. Hey guys, I'm Matt Nichols. Welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. This is a weekly podcast we're doing, and it's basically our talk show to talk about Japanese maples and so much more. Yeah, we love Japanese maples. We really appreciate everybody listening. Make sure if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, make sure to go and give us five stars. We really appreciate that. That helps us so much in the algorithms for more people to find our our pretty new podcast. Yeah, that's my brother, Tim. We get so fired up about maples, we don't even introduce ourselves sometimes, so I'll introduce him for him. And guys, definitely check us out on all major podcast platforms. You can find us on basically anything, and we also air a video component to these videos every single Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. There's a live chat associated with that, and it is madness. Those guys are awesome. They're so much fun. That live chat is becoming its own community, and I greatly appreciate you guys. So today's topic is one of those things that people ask about all the time. I mean, this is probably one of our top topics when it comes to Japanese maples is container gardening with Japanese maples. Yeah, it is a highly sought after topic. It can be a controversial topic. People disagree. And hey, you can always disagree with us on our information. We always try to provide the best information with you, but it's a conversation we start with gardeners. And we love that live chat because it allows you to interact and and give your input But uh, I think we're going to give you some good insights toward growing Japanese maples in containers, some things to avoid, some things to look for, and and basically a how-to for helping a lot of you grow in Japanese maples that want to keep them in pots long-term. You you might be something you know you're moving soon. You know uh, you have a reason to keep it in a container, and hopefully this gives you some more confidence to do that and and a better success overall. So, Matt, what is so great about containers? Well, you know, Japanese maples are that ever-changing beauty. You can definitely go watch our podcast on on why Japanese maples. We kind of do an intro into what we like about them. And, you know, containers give you everything that you love about maples, but in a format you can bring back to the patio. You can bring it back uh, to the deck. You can enjoy, you know, that ever-changing beauty. And you can keep it in a smaller overall container so that you're having this almost bonsai-esque or at least smaller container garden, uh, you know, fairy gardens, Railroad gardens are always popular for Japanese maples, so it makes perfect sense that container gardening would be so popular for Japanese maples because you can bring everything you love about that larger tree in the landscape, keep it in a smaller area, and bring that up and decorate areas that you wouldn't necessarily have a lot of plants going on. So, Yeah, I mean, I, that's the reason I love containers. I mean, you can bring them, like you said, to your patio. You can bring them out, extend them out to your driveway. You can bring them up to your porch and have a garden on your porch. And everything you love about gardening everything you love about Japanese maples, you can enjoy it in places you never thought about before. And that's the, to me, is one of the awesome things about containers. I mean, there's so many fun things about them. I mean, I think collectors often think that containers are so great because you can get so many more (laughs) than you have space for in the ground. Right. As uh, Japanese maple collectors, a lot of you are gardening uh, in pots by necessity because you have more trees than you can put in the ground. And hey, I certainly understand that. Uh, you know, that's that's a way that you can extend your collections for things like Japanese maples and have massive plant collections, but not necessarily commit to putting everything in the ground. Now, I always like to let people know that in the ground is the easiest. Now, J.D. Veritrees, in his most famous book on Japanese maples, talks about growing plants in containers. I'll have people come up to me and say, well, it can't be done or it shouldn't be done. And I always point them to Veritrees. Veritrees says, you know, containers are a great way to grow Japanese maples, But there's some key steps you should look into. There's things you can do to make it more successful. Now, we typically recommend growing Japanese maples in containers in zone 6 through zone 9. Now, we do recommend maples uh, in the ground zones 5 through 9. So typically, growing one in a pot does take it up one zone. Uh, I find people in hotter zones tend to make that even more exaggerated than us in the colder zones. We're six zone 6 here, so we leave a lot out year-round. A lot of our trees are outside, in containers, in pots. Uh, I think too much is made of how cold it gets. If your tree is shut down and it's not active, it's not over-fertilized and it's not over-pushed, it's going to do great in a container. 
outside in a zone six setting. Now, zone five setting for that pot, you've heard me say it many times, but you're going to need to protect that pot. You're going to need to plant that pot in the ground, or you're going to need to bring it into a warm, uh, not warm, but a warmer than the outside temperature shed or garage that can maintain dormancy, but not overactivate the tree. Yeah, I mean, Japanese maples, they're one of those plants that they make such great container plants. I mean, they've got those non-invasive roots, and they're, they're just great for those container plants. But also, containers are just, if you've got a container pot, Japanese maple is a great choice for that. Mm-hmm. I mean, just that non-invasive roots, the ever-changing beauty. But on top of that, too, on some of those selections like Arium and Autumn Moon, that you want to move around the mm-hmm. yard and find that sweet spot so that it really finds a spot where it's super happy. The best part about containers is they're mobile. And yeah. it's not like you're putting a tree in the ground, then you're disturbing it, moving it to somewhere else in the ground. You can actually just move this pot to find the happiest spot for that plant. Yeah, there are many reasons why you may want to garden with Japanese maples in containers and why it may be more beneficial to you to have them in containers. You know, one of the most obvious that people bring up all the time is they're not in their permanent home. They know they're moving in two years. They've got their house on the market. They want to collect Japanese maples. They don't want to stop buying them because they're awesome. And so they want to keep collecting trees, but they know this isn't where they want to commit to have their Japanese maple forest long term. So you can keep them in containers. Take your plants with you. I mean, I I always tell people this. A lot of people regret it. They move and they, they leave a tree there. You can garden in a container and then take that pot with you. You can also put that pot in the ground and then take it later. So you can plant your container in the ground and kind of keep it more in that in ground kind of uh, easier format so that it's, you know, not having to be uh, overwintered in a garage or something in zone five. Uh, you, you can be watering it more easily if it's already planted in the ground, but that's one way you can do that. If you know you're going to move, go ahead and stick your, stick it in a container, put your container in the ground. You're not over committing. You do want to check that one very frequently because after about even two to three years, your roots may be grown through your drain holes. So that's one of the things you want to watch for if you plant the pot in the ground. But, that, you know, moving is one of the top reasons why people garden in Japanese maples in containers. And a good way to do that is to take one pot and put it in the ground and then slide your other pot and, right. and slightly turn the drain hole so that it's more difficult for those roots to pop out. But that's a great way to overwinter a plant is a pot in the pot in the ground. And Japanese maples in containers, I mean, it just makes sense. You understand why so many people do this. I mean, this is something that people all around the world do. You'll see people in Europe posting photos of their Japanese maples in containers in out on their patio, out on their deck. Mm-hmm. In fact, I think Japanese maples in containers actually may be more popular in Europe than it is in the United States because there's less ground to actually garden on right. many of their apartments and places if, that are If you're in a big city, it may be the only way you're able to grow a lace leaf or enjoy that kind of beauty, especially on a patio or deck. Now, uh, there are a lot of good reasons that a container may be more advantageous for your spot. Uh, one of those could be that your spot is staying too wet. So if you have an area that's staying boggy or wet, you've heard Tim and I mention all the time that Japanese maples don't want wet feet. We'll get into that with containers. But a, a container can raise that plant above that water level for that soggier area. You can put some bricks down and get that up higher and essentially create a raised bed with a container. You're having a container that's a little bit higher than the water level there. It may be somewhere that you couldn't naturally grow a Japanese maple for just the amount of water saturation that's happening there in the ground. And a container gives you a, an easy way to enjoy a large lace leaf, even an older tree there in a container. I think that's a great point. I mean, you want to make sure that those, like you talked about, those bricks raise the pot up above the water line. Mm-hmm. But if you do that, you can garden with Japanese maples, even those wetter spots in your yard that you normally wouldn't think about. And it really gets people thinking about unique ways to garden, even their more boggy areas, mm-hmm. if they got creative on how to raise that pot up and container up high enough to get good drainage. Now, you know, this is, in talking about why people want to garden with containers, you know, Tim touched on a little bit, but maples are excellent plants for containers because they don't get large long-term. A lot of them can be relatively small, relatively compact plants that aren't going to outgrow an area and lend themselves very well to container culture. Uh, I've had garden shows where people say, you know, how long can I grow this Japanese maple in a pot? And sometimes I'll have, you know, 20 plus year old lace leaves in containers with me at a garden show. And I'll point this out to people, you know, it might even be in like a 20 gallon container, but uh, this tree's never lived in the ground. So it's a tree that I've grown here in a nursery setting in a pot for over 20 years. And it's something that can be achieved with very little 
you know, maintenance. It's something that's actually very easy to do is to grow Japanese maples in containers for, you know, a long amount of time. So it's something, depending on how big a pot and how long you want to work with it, you can keep a tree in a container you know, well over 20 years. And in fact, that's what bonsai really to the, it is. It's this to the extreme. I mean, it's taking a Japanese maple or a tree and growing in the container for a very, very long time. And sometimes two, 300 years in a container. Right. I mean, you have to do special bonsai techniques to keep that in a container for that long for in a bonsai type setting. But that's what bonsai is, is it's container gardening to the max. Yeah, I mean, you can bring everything you love about Japanese maples into the container garden. And uh, it, with less and less space, it just makes more sense that container gardening continues to grow in popularity. Uh, you know, we have less garden room or we have more collections and we want to bring some of those collections back to an area where, where uh, you know, the patio is not too exciting. But when you've got six or seven different containers on there with some really cool Japanese maples in it, it's really lively up that area. And uh, it just makes a lot of sense why, why, it's a, why it's a phenomenon that's only continuing to grow and expand. So let's start talking about how to make a container. I mean, Japanese maple containers are really important. And let's just go ahead and say you've selected your Japanese maple and you're going to choose your pot. I mean, that's typically the order we recommend because then you can choose the size pot according to the size container that you already right. have. Now, I think too much is made over the materials that the container is made out of. Um, you know, the thing you want to be conscious the most of there is that it is insulating for your area if you're in a colder climate and that it's not too uh, reflective of the heat and getting too much heat in the container itself long term in an area that's warmer. So I always want people to be conscious that a Japanese maple, uh, you know, when you have it in a pot, you're in charge of every aspect of that tree. So you're going to be maintaining you know, a small level environment. It's not a terrarium, but essentially you've got a small terrarium, right? You, you're you going to be responsible for, you know, nutrition, soil, water, everything that's going on in this plant's environment. It's not going to be able to obtain it through the soil like it naturally would in the ground. So you're going to have to take a little bit more care to make sure everything looks great. Now, that being said, you want to make sure your pot isn't going to hold a bunch of extra heat. You want to make sure that the area where you're putting your tree isn't getting a ton of reflective heat. Like Japanese maples can do great around pools, but be conscious that that reflective light may make one bake up a little faster. If you've got a lot of reflective light from a glass office building on a container, that can be a little hotter. Now, the materials matter for your container, but not that much. I think too much is made of that. Um, you certainly want to be conscious if you're in Memphis that you're not putting it in like a super hot black ceramic pot that's going to be holding a lot of residual heat because that residual heat on the root ball does matter. So that's going to be a factor, selecting a cooler uh, pot in a warmer zone and selecting a pot that may have more insulation in a colder zone are important. But I've seen plastic, you know, rock, concrete containers. I've seen Japanese maples and everything, especially here in Zone 6B where I'm at, and I've seen them all look great and amazing. I think a lot of that deals down comes down to preference on the, on the pot type. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about a little bit about pot size. I mean, say someone gets a one-gallon Japanese maple. You don't want to take that and put that directly into a large 15-gallon container. It's very unusual because Japanese maples like to have their roots constricted. And so when you put them in the ground, their roots, the root soil is a little more constricting, and mm. they're allowed to put on a lot of top growth with a little bit of root growth. When you put a Japanese maple in a huge container, or if you dig a big hole, it's the same thing, and put a lot of artificial soil in there, mm -hmm. um, that Japanese maple is going to try to put on tons of root growth and it doesn't get that constriction and you barely get any top growth out of that plant. Yeah, you'll make up your top growth slowly. We did a whole video on this. It was a little controversial. I think I think people were trying to get the concept of it down and they're like, why does the pot size matter? And you're going to grow a maple at a better pace if you're not jumping from like a one to a 10 gallon. We typically pot up from like ones to twos or ones to threes here at a nursery, then give them some time in threes and then go from like, threes to a five or a seven. We're not typically jumping from a one straight to a seven. And like Tim was saying, if we do that, what we tend to find is slower overall top growth. The root will put up, the tree will put on a ton of root growth, but that top growth is slower to make up the difference. And, and like you say, in the Japanese maple actually needs a little bit of that pushback that that restriction of the root helps the top continue to grow at a more moderate pace. If, uh, if you're making only conducive environments for roots, sometimes your roots uh, and eventually it's going to make up the difference, but you're going to be slower to get there on the top growth. Now, 
if you choose a small pot for your one-gallon Japanese maple, it can grow in there, but it's going to require more maintenance down the road. So mm-hmm. keep that in mind that the smaller container that you grow your Japanese maple in, you may have to take on some more bonsai-type practices right. to keep it in those really small containers. It can be done, but remember, if you're doing that, you're essentially growing it in a bonsai, even if you're not shaping it like a, a traditional bonsai. Right. You're certainly going to have to be watering more in an area that doesn't have as much soil. Uh, eventually, you're going to be having to check the tree more frequently in a smaller container. So it is great to upsize the container uh, when you're picking one out. I don't recommend picking one the exact same size most times because – you know, they're conducive to putting on some growth. They want to get out there, especially young maples, young acers. They love that expansion of the root ball, that expansion of the top. Let them put on some growth. Too much too much can be too restrictive unless a bonsai is what you're going for. Now, the pot that we've talked about, the type of pot, we've talked about the size of the pot. The most important thing when it comes to the pot is the drainage. Drainage is key. If you have a... a a mm. pot and it doesn't have a hole, you don't have a pot, you have a bowl. If you've listened to Tim and I ever talk about Japanese maples, you know we've beaten the dead horse, we've resurrected it, and we've beaten it again. But we have to tell you it's so important. Uh, the single biggest factor in the happiness of Japanese maples is typically drainage. Now that can be in the ground, but it's so important. Like I said, when you're growing a tree in a container, you're now in charge of every aspect of that tree's life. So you have to be a little bit more conscious of especially the drainage. Now, that saucer of death below the tree is one of the biggest factors I see. Oftentimes, people will send you know, our office a picture of a tree, and they'll say, my tree's kind of struggling. I'm not sure what's going on. I've got it in a pot, and they'll send us a picture of it, and I'll say, hold on. Send me another picture and show me the bottom of the pot, and that saucer of death is below it. You know, so much with horticulture, we're allowed to get by with putting you know, kind of a retaining tray below uh, a container of annuals or other plants that don't mind having that water there to absorb through it. Japanese maples do not want soggy, wet roots. So by even having that small tray, it's able to keep water through the entire container so much longer, and you're going to continue to get kind of root rot and some soggy root uh, conditions going on there that are going to lead to uh, a breaking down of the root rather than expansion. So you want maples to dry out completely between watering and uh, definitely avoid the saucer of death below your container. It's one of the worst mistakes people can make in container gardening with maples. When you're choosing your container, your pot, you need to make sure that that container has at least one hole, if not multiple holes. Mm -hmm. If it is a type of container that you can drill multiple holes in, go ahead and drill multiple holes in there. Um, If it's a container that you can't drill multiple holes in, maybe like a ceramic pot that may break if you're trying to drill a hole into it, then you're going to want to add some gravel to the very bottom of that pot to really add the extra drainage. So it's essentially like you've got a whole lot of holes drilled that will then funnel into that one hole that you do have. I saw someone recently on Facebook say that adding gravel to your containers, that myth was busted. (laughs) Like, I don't know about that because I've seen it working great for a long time. There are a lot of things you can do in place of gravel. Like my mom has a lot of containers in her garden here. Uh, If you've ever seen our our Maplewood Gardens there, that's where my parents garden. And uh, she has a ton of trees in beautiful containers. We tend to give her big pots for Mother's Day. And inevitably, just like my wife, my mother wants us to move those around a ton. And so oftentimes I'll search for something that isn't going to break down but not be quite as heavy as those rocks. Uh, Plastic bottles that are used or something like that works also in the bottom to provide drainage but also a light, airy, you know, format so you're not carrying as much stone. Be conscious that they could break down over time, though, and restrict your drains. So you have to be careful that you're going to check it if it's an, a plant that you're going to be checking ever so often. We're going to recommend how long you should check your trees and containers anyway, but you want to be conscious that um, if you if you want an area where the gravel is going to be an issue, you know, make sure it's got good drainage, but make sure uh, if you're moving them a lot, you don't have to carry a lot of heavy stuff. There's other alternatives to that gravel. That said, sometimes in some areas with a lot of wind, gravel is great because it's going to provide you know, more weight to your pot so it's not just blowing over. Especially if someone's choosing a more upright variety that mm-hmm. may be more prone to blow over. You're going to need to add more weight to that root And ball. by adding that extra weight to the gravel, you can help keep that plant upright and looking great in your container. Whereas if you chose something like I've seen people use packing peanuts underneath, mm-hmm. which I don't really recommend because they, some, mush, down too they mush down too much and block some of the water flow. So they don't really give you that same drainage that gravel does. But they also would blow over. I mean, 
if you're using something that's going to be more upright, they're going to be too light in the bottom of your pot, causing your plant to be top heavy and then blow over. So do keep that in mind when choosing what you're choosing for to add extra drainage to your, your container. Because the pot is probably one of the most important things, the container itself in growing your Japanese maple. That's going to be the most important aspect of this entire thing, other than the Japanese maple itself. Yeah, I completely agree. The uh, The pot is so important, especially for the drainage aspect of it. Um, you know, so you got to make sure it's a pot that you can either have good drainage in or add more drainage to. Now that can be tricky with really expensive, um, pots sometimes because you don't, you don't want to go drilling more into your container if you have a very expensive one and risk cracking it, but it might not be the right container for a Japanese maple unless you can add added drainage. You need to have very good drainage. Uh, we like to often joke that if you don't have a, a drain, you don't have a pot, you have a bowl and you don't want to grow Japanese maples in a bowl. Yeah, that's only really good for putting fruit on a table to show off. It's not good for growing a Japanese maple. Really, any plants. I mean, you got to have drainage. I mean, plants don't want to be in a bowl. They need, <laughs> they need a place where the water actually changes so that you can change it out. Uh, so that's just good advice for, for especially, you know, Japanese maples. But most deciduous trees are not going to want to be in a bowl. <laughs> so next up, one of the most important things is soil. And you got to have soil in any container for a Japanese maple to grow into it. Some type of media for that plant to grow in. So what would be your best recommendation for soil? Now, we use a very, very uh, well-draining mix here at our nursery because Japanese maples love that process of drying out for the roots to go in search of moisture. They don't want to be standing in water, like we said. So if you're expanding that root ball, if the trees are putting on microfibrous roots looking for moisture as they dry out each time, you're going to have a much healthier, faster growing tree than a tree that's maybe getting watered too easily because it's holding too much. So soils that create uh, good drainage are awesome. Now, paramount amongst that is typically aged pine bark. Aged pine bark is one of the best components you can add. Uh, there's so many different ways to grow Japanese maples in soil. And, and this is inevitably where people are going to jump in and go, what about this specific thing? What about this specific thing? And the truth is a lot of things work, but aged pine bark is one of the very best components to a bag mixture or a soil mixture that you can add because one, it's going to be slightly acidic and two, it's going to add increased drainage to your container. And you can actually choose pine bark that has different size pieces of bark to increase your drainage. And that's going to increase aeration to the roots and increase your drainage to your pot as well. So you can always choose larger pine bark pieces in your actual soil media that will make your container be more adequate for good drainage. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, soil can be different in different climates Mm -hmm. um, for for containers. Some people prefer to use their regular soil. Some people prefer to use, especially in colder climates, Mm -hmm. because sometimes a pine bark mix in a very cold climate can almost freeze dry during the winter months. And in those colder climates, we're talking zone 5, zone 6A, it may be smart to mix in some of your native soil with some pine bark mix so you get some good drainage. But then also you get that uh, where it's not going to be giving you that freeze dry during the winter months. So that's one thing to keep in mind too whenever it comes to your soil media. One of the best things I would recommend for growing Japanese maples in your area is if you find somebody else in your area who's growing Japanese maples, check out what soil media types that they're using. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I think is probably the most controversial topic on this is which soil do I use? Mm -hmm. And I think it's sort of suited. There's different types suited for different environments. Like I talked about often people who are in colder climates use a much heavier soil media Mm -hmm. where if you get towards someone in a hotter climate, they're going to be using more of that pine bark mix. One of the things I I want to hesitate I want I want to make sure that you know and you that you don't do is use a soil mixture potting up in say November or December that has a lot of fertilizers already in it. Often your pre-mixed bags that you are purchasing in the store will have fertilizer already in those bags. Mm-hmm. And what you're doing is when you're adding that soil mixture to your container is you're adding nitrogen to your plant during the wrong time of the season to activate this plant in the winter months when it should not be activated at all. 
Yeah, slow release fertilizers work great. You want to you want to really avoid those, especially in colder zones, staying active. They can overdo it. Sometimes really small trace amounts won't matter as much. I mean, uh, but but you want to be careful on any higher level fertilizers. Uh, what we use at our nursery is very similar to Fafford 52 or Fafford uh, Grow Mix. It's also very similar to Miracle Grow Bag Mix. Uh, I think too much can be made of what to use when the one of the key things is drainage. And a lot of these bag mixes are going to condition your natural soils. If you're adding to it very well, they're going to increase the drainage. Uh, I like to go, you know, 60, 40 of my nursery style mix with some natural soils, even red dirt clay types, if I'm blending it together nicely, because it's going to put some more nutrition in there and it's going to break that down. So we've picked out your, your container. You've got your Japanese maple and you've got your soil. When you're putting this Japanese maple in the container itself, you're going to want to make sure that you put it just like you would plant it. You don't want to bury that plant. You want to have that plant slightly raised up or you want to have that plant level with where it was in the container that you got it out of. And I think that's a mistake a lot of people make is they, they get a high grafted, maybe a high grafted uh, lace leaf Japanese maple like mm-hmm. an orangeola. And they decide, well, I want this tree to be a little bit shorter. So they bury it, bury the graft further down. And that's something that will smother the roots on the Japanese maple and will make that tree struggle in your container. So you always want to make sure that that is still towards the very top of the container, just like it was in the container that it came out of. And make sure you've got a thin layer of gravel down there in the very bottom, especially if your container only has one hole. So just keep that in mind. Thin layer of gravel, we're talking an inch or two in the very bottom, depending on the size of your container. You've got your soil on top, and then you've got your tree right at the very top of your soil line. And I often make that soil line a little bit shorter than your container. That way, if you're watering, it doesn't overflow. It's very easy to water whenever you're actually putting that tree in the container itself. But one of the things Matt and I love doing at this point in stage, once you've got the tree in the container, is putting in some companion plants right at the very top of the container. Sedums make an excellent, excellent plant to put as a companion plant with non-invasive roots that you can put at the very top of the Japanese maple. We like doing this because what it does is it gives a very aesthetic feel where that sedum can just sort of flow over the the sides of the container. But it is also very useful as well because that sedum, often the sun coming down that's hitting the top of the Japanese maple roots and drying out the very top of the Japanese maple roots, that sedum will actually cover over top of the very top layer of those roots and keep them much cooler. So that's something that's very beneficial but you can also use that to add color contrast where you can use something like a creeping Jenny that gives you a yellow mm-hmm. <laughs> underneath something like a Rhode Island red that's got that nice red color. Making some pop and contrast with the color, adding to the garden effects, but also doing it in a way that helps the Japanese maple, but gives something really pretty out there as well. Yeah, Angelina is one of the most common sedums, but it's also one of the most popular for underneath maples and containers. Uh, you can put this out there. It's going to provide a chartreuse green uh, component which contrasts beautifully with uh, a red lace leaf like Red Dragon or Tamukiyama. It's going to give you some stark interest. But one of the key components here are that those companion plants, you don't want ones in containers that are going to give too much root competition. So sedums, hens and chicks, small plants that are herbaceous that aren't going to take up an entire area work great. You don't want to plant things like Japanese yews. I've seen those in containers. A Japanese mu- a yew is going to use all the soil space and and it's really going to choke the Japanese maple out long term because it's not going to give a lot of space for that root ball. Maples have a very non-invasive root system. So we even want to be conscious that maybe a daylily or, or something like that in a container, it might not be a problem in the ground because that maple has more area to go. So you can plant hostas right up next to your Japanese maple sometimes in the ground because there's more root expansion space, but in a container, you have to be very conscious not to plant a larger style hosta. You know, some of those dwarf miniatures work great. In fact, I've done that a lot too. But you have to be careful not to plant something that's going to take up too much of your container and very much limit your Japanese maple. And this could lead to them drying out quicker. It could lead to them having a soil deficiency, a, you know, a nutrient deficiency because the other plant is taking up all of the water too quickly or all the nutrients too quickly. So be conscious of what you're adding to your container and make sure it's not being a detriment to that Japanese maple long term. The, I think the biggest offender of this are these ornamental grasses. And while they can make beautiful things out in the landscape or beautiful, beautiful container plants, 
they don't make great companion plants with Japanese maples. Especially in containers. Yeah. Now, in the ground, it might work if there's a slight amount of distance. I mean, you know, maples maples do have the non-invasive roots, but containers, you're, you're not giving them any more space. They're kind of they're kind of set in what they can do there. Yeah, and it's going to take up all the moisture. It's going to take up all the, the dirt space, and it's going to try to force that Japanese maple to grow roots downward, and the Japanese maple is a shallow-rooted plant. And that's why you really want to make sure you use a non-invasive plant when you're doing this because a Japanese maple is non-invasive and it's going to be competing whatever you put in there for water and for space in that container. Yeah. Sedums and hens and chicks are some of my favorites. There's a lot of things you can do and people often ask, what about this? Just look at the root growth. Really? That's really what matters the most. Is that root growth going to be large? If so, avoid it for your containers. Uh, We're going to actually get into some good cultivars for containers, but before we do, let's talk a little bit more about water. Um, I think water, you know, we've talked about drainage, but you want to be careful. You know, I know sometimes I have people who go, well, my Japanese maple gets good water. I have an automatic watering system and it sprays the entire yard. And again, you have to control the entire environment for that containerized plant. So while the drainage may be okay on the Japanese maple in the ground, that's getting a sprinkler system sprayed to it. You got to check those too. But in that container, it may be holding way more water, even with that same rate hitting it. Yeah. You got to remember that the drainage has to continue all the way through the plant and through the container itself, because if it doesn't flow all the way through the container, it can continue to build up and get more and more water Mm -hmm. in that. Even if you've got great porous media, even if you have a hole, if your plant container is sitting directly on the ground and sort of suctioned to the ground, that water doesn't have anywhere to go. So it's just going to keep filling back up. So watering is really, really important to make sure you're not overwatering. Make sure you've got pot feed out there. Right. Um, I know that uh, we've talked about in some of our uh, previous podcasts that paint stirrers work great under some of those really nice ornamental decorative uh, pots. You don't even on, notice they're there. Yeah, you break them off, you slide them underneath a decorative pot on a concrete, and it gives it just enough space that that water will continue to flow through the container. Mm-hmm. This is something Maple Mama does great in her garden. So a lot of people will look at those containers and they'll think, wow, that's a mulch garden, and the containers are right up next to the soil level, and that couldn't be further from the truth. If you actually pick the container up, she's dug a small hole under the container and put at least three bricks that that tree's sitting on. So it has elevated area for that drainage to be draining through under the container, and that's helping that tree so much in the winter months in a container because it's not holding water during the colder months. You know, maples don't like to be wet, but they really don't like to be cold and wet. So you want to make sure during those winter months they're draining through completely, and those pot feet those brick underneath the soil level that are elevating that drainage are such a big factor because it's giving some space for that water to drain through too. And it's really helping the overall life of the container and also the Japanese maple. You don't want your, your containers freezing and busting. Uh, you know, that's not going to work good if you have a really expensive pot. So it's going to make your pot last longer, but it's also going to make the Japanese maple look a lot better. But the main, one of the things to remember with Japanese maples in containers is that you are taking care of this plant. This plant can't put out its roots and find water in this container because there's none in this water unless you're watering it. So they do require more care. And Japanese maples, watering them, it's critical. I mean, if you've got a Japanese maple out in full sun and it's rained a little bit, Mm -hmm. often, if it's rained an inch, it really might have permeated that soil two, three inches. Right. And really didn't saturate that soil enough for that plant to really be considered watered. And it's always good to go out there and check after a watering and say, put your finger down in the pot and say, you know, that really didn't saturate much. I better water this plant. You begin to learn how much water actually it takes to saturate a container. Right. I've had people say, well, we've had so much rain lately. I'm afraid of my trees and pots. I'm putting tarps over them and stuff. You're very rarely ever going to have to do that. Really, in most zones where you can grow Japanese maples, as long as you have good drainage, you're not going to have to worry about too much water from rainfall. It's really added water. And I often see people, especially in that late June, early July time frame, even into August here in the South, people will say, I don't know what went wrong. I've had this Japanese maple in a container for four or five years now. And we went away on vacation in July and I came back and it's all crispy. And it's because the root ball actually grew and expanded. So that tree needed more water to make up the difference. So when the root ball was smaller, Uh, you know, it was easier for it to hold moisture and take up moisture. But as the root ball expanded in that container, there was less space for water and less 
uh, more roots to take up that water. So the tree drew, dried itself out so much quicker um, by by pulling up that moisture in the later part of the season. So you want to be conscious of that. Typically, you know, five to uh, seven years, you want to be checking that root ball, seeing how much it's expanded, and has it taken up the full size of the container at this point. Uh, if you have, you're going to have to be watering a lot more frequently. And we'll talk about some steps to to minimize that and how often you should look at it. And one thing about watering, too, it's different in the spring, and it's different in the summer, mm-hmm. and it's different in the fall. I mean, a plant during the summer is probably going to require a lot of water because you have a lot of heat, and it's drying out that container very quickly. Same thing to be said if you're growing a tree in the sun versus the shade. Mm-hmm. A plant, a Japanese maple in a container in the shade is going to require less water than one in the sun. It's, Sun's so much more difficult. Even here in Zone 6B, we're in a very easy area to grow Japanese maples. Um, we're in the mountains of Western North Carolina, if you didn't know already. But uh, a very easy area to grow. We get cool nights here, so we don't wake up to a lot of high heat. Our summer nights, uh, we can even get into the 60s in the summer. So we're giving a lot of recovery time for plants. But even here in our area, I recommend containers more in shade. Now, it certainly can be done. I've seen some amazing containers in sun, but it just makes it a little bit more challenging. If you can get your Japanese maple in your pot in some late day, that that uh, like 2 p.m. on, if you can provide more shade during that time frame, it's just going to be easier overall for you. It certainly can be done in full sun, but you may have to consider having a drip irrigation system or something that waters a little bit more consistently and and more frequently than you would in a, in a shadier location. It's just the steps are easier if you can get some shade on it. And like we mentioned earlier too, you have to be more considerate of the type of container that you have in that sun location because certain types of containers hold too much heat right there on the roots of the Japanese maple. So if you have a Japanese maple in a concrete container in full sun, that container is going to get too hot directly on the roots of the plant in many climates. So that's one thing to consider. And it's going to be very difficult to keep that tree watered enough because you're already baking the roots. So always make sure that you're choosing the right style of the pot but also make sure that you're watering frequently enough if you are if you have a Japanese maple in a more sunlight condition because those are going to require a lot more water. So with Japanese maples, people always ask us, how much fertilizer do we fertilize in a container? And it's true that a soilless media that has no fertilizer in it has no, I mean, it has no fertilizer in it. And people say, well, should I fertilize my Japanese maple? And the answer is pretty simple. If you're wanting that Japanese maple to grow, Fertilize it. If you're wanting that Japanese maple to stay really small and stay in the container that you have it in, Mm. they don't require fertilizer. Japanese maples will grow without any fertilizer at all. They do it naturally out in the wild. They'll do it in your container as well. And Japanese maples don't require any fertilizer at all. J.D. Veritrees actually recommends no fertilizer. But in containers, it doesn't make sense if you have a Japanese maple in a small container. There's no reason to keep pumping fertilizer at it and trying to make it outgrow the container that you have it in if you want to keep it in that container. Right. If the goal is to keep the tree in the pot long-term, pruning and fertilizing may not be your main objectives. People will send me pictures of a tree in a container, and they'll say, how do I need to be shaping this? I don't want to get out of this container. It's been in here for 10 years. Uh, You know, very little. Uh, You you know, pruning in late summer is when the bonsai guys are going to do it. After that growth's hardened off, that's when you're going to reduce energy from your tree. Pruning in mid to late March for major changes is going to increase the growth of your tree that's when you'd want to fertilize. Uh, now, a light fertilizer is great. You can use liquid fertilizers that don't build up a lot of residual nitrogen. In your container, you want to be conscious to not put too many things that have a lot of nitrogen buildup or a lot of salt buildup. Well, often, a lot of times, some of those kelp mixes are great for maples, but in the container, they can add too much salts long term to your container. And uh, they, you know, you want to be conscious of anything that kind of changes your alkalinity. Maples like it slightly acidic, so you want to be conscious of that when fertilizing as well. But less is more if your goal is to keep it small. Yeah, I, I think that's really the, the, the key thing with fertilizer. Again, anything 10 or under if you're trying to get that tree, 15 or under trying to get that tree on the nitrogen to grow. But if you're just trying to keep that tree in the container and enjoy this tree in the container as a part of your collection, there's no real need to keep adding fertilizer to this plant because all you're going to do with fertilizer is make it grow. And I think people forget that fertilizer makes things grow and grow fast and they just get in the habit of fertilizing everything. I I know that plenty of people come to me and they, they ask that simple question. They say, I've got a collection in Japanese of Japanese maples and containers. 
And, you know, what should I fertilize them with? Like, well, are you planning on keeping these in those containers? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's not fertilize. Yeah. And miracle Grow or something like that can go a long way if you want to add some nutri- nutrition to them, but not over spike it. You know, most of what we use as gardeners, a lot of Osmocote, a lot of granulated mixes, you're going to be conscious of that, how long that release is. We, are, we, we, we talk about this a lot, but uh, especially granulated mixes, you want to put them out in the early spring and not continually. Uh, we've cut off all fertilizing here after May. And that's because the trees, especially in containers, we do everything here at our nursery in containers uh, for the most part. We don't have an in-ground operation. We grow our maples in ground for us. So once they go into the soil, they stay here. And once they're in containers, those are the ones we sell. So we don't fertilize any after May. And we find that especially in containers, that helps the trees shut down, go dormant, and not be too active during those winter months. That's going to help you in containers not shock your root systems by having active white rooting trees during the wrong time of the year. So is your tree outgrowing its pot? What, what do you do then when your tree outgrows its pot? Now, the indicators that your tree is starting to outgrow its pot is when you're going out there and you've had this tree in a container for a few years and you're watering it and you're noticing that as soon as you water it, it pours out the bottom of that pot very, very quickly. Now, you may just have really good drainage, but often that means is that there's so much root mass in that soil that... There's, the soil is no longer holding a lot of the water mm-hmm. and it's going straight down to the bottom of the pot and pouring out. Yeah, I've, I've said this probably before, uh, but I had a tree I gave my Uncle Glenn and it sat. It was a, uh, a Tamukiyama and a patio planter and it sat on a big rock. If many of you have ever visited Hillstone Arboretum, you've probably seen that big rock as you enter in there. And there was a gorgeous Tamukiyama sitting in the container uh, for 12 plus years. And I'd kind of forgotten that I'd given it to him. And one year he was saying, gosh, this thing is just... You know, the water goes right through it. He was watering it with a hose every year. So I, I went over to the tree and I pulled it up. And sure enough, the roots were 99% of the container at this point. There was like one little piece of dirt left. That tree had used up all the nutrition and nutrients possible in that container. And uh, basically what you had was one big root ball that was just, uh, you know, when it watered it, it got water. And then the water washed through quickly. Uh, and so we got that one in the ground. We broke up that root ball a little bit, got it planted and got it recovering. But there's some things you can do before that stage to keep a tree in a container long term. Now, what we recommend is basically in uh, early March here, or even in late February, if you have Japanese maples, it's good to check them in the containers every five to seven years. Uh, During this time frame, you can check to make sure that the roots haven't grown through the drain holes of your pot. Uh, During this time frame, it's easier to bare root a tree if you have to make some changes. And it's, it's easier to just check on your plant. You know, you don't want to be bare rooting a tree in leaf. So you don't want to be doing this process in June. So it's better to check it ahead of time so you can make the necessary adjustments to achieve that desired outcome. If your buds have broken on your Japanese maple, it's probably a little too late. We like to do this before the buds, they're either swelling or the buds haven't begun to swell yet. I mean, this is for us is the best time to pull the trees out and do these root pruning uh, methods. Or And when you have this, you pull this out of the pot, you can make one of three decisions. You can either put it in a bigger pot, you can put it in the ground, or you can root prune and then put that tree back in the same container it was in. And that's really almost the bonsai style type method of how people keep bonsais in smaller containers. Now, what you want to do is when you pull that tree out, look for the woodier roots. We're talking those thicker roots, those bigger roots. We're not talking about the, the microfibrous roots. Those microfibrous roots are doing a great job of getting water to your plants. Now, if you can take out more of the woody roots, you can take up to a third of those roots out and put it back in that container. And they're often the roots that take up the most space too, those woody roots. And remove some of those, put it back in the same container, add some soil back to your pot, and you can keep that in the container for a few more years. And then after three or four more years, go back and check that container again and see how much more maintenance you might need to do with those roots. Yeah. I have customers with 250 plus trees in container gardens that never put their trees in the ground and have 20 year old collections. And what they do is they use this root pruning method to keep the tree in a pot long term, And uh, it definitely is a little more labor intensive. You know, the easiest method is to bump it up to a larger container and let that root ball continue to expand on its own or to move it to the ground if it's reached its fruition for you in the container garden and start over with a smaller tree. That certainly can be a way to achieve the same aesthetic as well. 
I'm going to take this 30 year old lace leaf and I'm going to go ahead and plant it here. And then I'm going to put something smaller in the container and start over. That's, that's often done a lot as well, but by root pruning it, you can keep that same tree smaller long-term. It is something you have to get out ahead of. So you want to be doing this every five to seven years from the get go. It's harder to reclaim that if you have a 30 year old tree and that, that might already be past its time. It might already be time to put that one in the ground if it hasn't been maintained all along. Now, Japanese maples, they're, they're an easy plant to do your maintenance on. They're great for containers. I mean, they're just great plants all around, but there are some specific cultivars that are fantastic for containers. Now, you can take any Japanese maple and grow it in a container. I've seen Seri, which is the fastest growing Japanese maple, be grown as a gorgeous, gorgeous container plant. So keep that in mind. You can choose any Japanese maple that you want, but mm-hmm. there are certain ones that lend them very well to container culture. Yeah, I mean, a great example of that is I've had 15-foot Seriu available here at my nursery before in large containers. And so they can certainly be in a pot for quite a while. It's not something you have to um, put in the ground, even because it's an upright cultivar. Tim briefly mentioned it too, but be conscious that the container you have your tree in is going to uh, be formatted for an upright tree. So if you have a tree that's going to be like Siri, it's going to have more of a canopy, more of a larger overall style, that can be an awesome container plant. But you're also going to have to have a pot that's weighted for that taller tree. You need something that's not going to blow over immediately in your environment. You're going to need something that, that you can, uh, you know, you can sustain that upper growth with uh, for that container size. Lace leaves and smaller dwarf trees are really easy to garden with because they're not going to provide that height that you have to make up the difference for. So you can, you can kind of have more uh, flexibility on the container for shorter plants. So if you go to mrmaple.com and you click on maples and then you go click on a filter you can actually go down to filters and underneath the filter that says use, you can click on containers and that will actually sort down for some of the best Japanese maples for containers. Now there's some really cool ones. There's Crimson Queen, mm-hmm. Tamukiyama, Red Dragon. I mean, those are classic red lace leaves. So Nob Shidari, those all make great containers. We've grown them all, all those in containers at, at uh, Maplewood Gardens for years and years. Mm-hmm. But there are some selections that are just outstanding and excellent and really unique and different for for this container gardening as well. Yeah, I would like to point out that probably your most common and most popular are those lace leaves. Uh, ones to avoid there probably Germain's gyration and Seri if you're wanting to stay smaller. Uh, but there are a lot of lace leaves, like you said, from Tamukiyama to Crimson Queen, Red Dragon, any of those that are going to have that lower aesthetic. I know Brian's putting an orange yellow in a big container to celebrate his one year here at Mr. Maple. And it's a great way to grow a Japanese maple and keep it smaller, but also have everything you love about that, that lace leaf quality, that low cascading umbrella in a small container. Those low cascading umbrellas, they make the perfect topper for patio planters. I mean, they already look aesthetically very pleasing shape wise. So it really doesn't matter which one you go with there. There's a lot of great options. Um, we, we do a ton of different lace leaves from waterfall to Veritas to Red Dragon, and any of those are going to kind of capture the imagination and put that that lace leaf aesthetic. Do you have a favorite lace leaf, Tim, of the reds, say, for, uh, my, for container gardening? My favorite is red filigree lace. I mean, it is by far one of the slowest growing red lace leaves, mm-hmm. and it stays in a container for a very long time. I mean, we have a probably a 25, 30-year-old specimen at Maplewood Gardens, yeah, and it's you know three feet tall, maybe three foot wide, and it could have stayed in a container for a really, really long time. But I also like red filigree lace because you can put that tree in a more shaded uh, location on your patio, mm-hmm. and it's still going to hold that red color very well. I mean, that's very unusual for a red lace leaf to be able to hold its color in a more shaded location. But red filigree lace does that and has that really web-like leaves that's more dissected than almost any of the other lace leaves. Yeah, I would say if I were picking one of my favorites is that orangeola. I love orangeola. It's one of my favorites. I love how many different color changes it goes through. One thing I like about orangeola is that it will weep down a little further than the container. It's a very heavily pendulous one. Uh, What's becoming really popular, we talked about hanging baskets. We did a little video on that on our channel about some of the Ryusen styles and hanging baskets and how you can grow those and hang in baskets, and they'll weep down further than the container. Now, a little bit more care with that than your typical container garden, Uh, but I love when the tree weeps down further than container. I think it looks so cool, and I think orangeola is one of the easiest ways to kind of get that aesthetic where you have 
the tree almost starting to cover up the pot. It's interacting with the pot a little bit. Those branches are down further uh, than the root ball even. And it just looks really cool. It's a great way to grow one. Uh, orange yellow is probably my pick for my favorite. If you count it as a red, again, you can count that one as a red or a green. It goes through so many colors. But I would say orange yellow is probably one of my favorites for container gardening. Now, there are plenty of things besides lace leaves so that make great container plants. Shana is probably one of the most popular non-lace leaves for containers. It's a dwarf red, which is broomed by Red Maple Nurseries, that just stays very tight, compact, gives you some good red color in the spring, Mm -hmm. and some really good uh, bright, bright reds in the fall. I mean, just stays a very tight, rounded shape, and has that witch's broom-like effect where the shortened center node just gives it a unique texture out there in the container garden. Shana is one of the most perfect trees for container garden, and it's got so many things going for it. It's very heat tolerant. Uh, It has a small rounded ball shape, especially in the container garden. So it really fits aesthetically very well on top of a patio planter. It's smaller overall size. It's perfect. Plus you're getting that, that, you know, really nice picked up bright red to then kind of a maroon midsummer and then bright scarlet reds in the fall. So you're getting a ton of good color changes on this one that really show out, that really bring a lot of what we like about Japanese maples in a smaller setting back to that patio or deck garden. Uh, Shana, kind of one of the quintessential ones for container garden. It's one of the ones I think of first when I think of a red for container gardening. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people start out trying to grow a container gardening, a container garden with a Japanese maple with a blood good or a seedling blood good. Right. And I think you're going to, you can do that, but you're going to have so much more maintenance long term. You're adding work for yourself. What they're looking to grow there is essentially a small tree anyway. So, you know, why reinvent the wheel? You can start out with a cultivar that's already smaller, that's already going to lend itself to staying small long term instead of having to fight a tree that wants to get 20 foot. And something like a Shana is going to give you that same red color or something like a Rhode Island red will give you the same leaves as blood good, the same thicker branching, mm-hmm. but in that rounded, tighter, compact habit. Oh, I love Rhode Island red. It's a, it's a great one. Uh, nice, compact density to it. It's basically... The perfect analogy for a dwarf blood good. If people say, I want a dwarf blood good, it actually holds its color a little better than blood good. And I'd say it has a little bit more premium fall color. But it's exactly what people are looking for that want a short, dense blood good. I've, I first saw this in a container at NJ Acer's Ed and Debbie Shin's Arboretum in New Jersey. And I remember seeing that in a blue pot with the, the red color of Rhode Island red. And I was just awestruck. I was like, man, that is the perfect container plant. That's when it hit me and struck me. And I was like, okay, Rhode Island Red. Everyone's looking for a Japanese maple that looks like a blood good in a container. Mm -hmm. Rhode Island Red, look no further. It's here. That and Shana are both super durable too. uh, So that they lend themselves extremely well to that container garden. Plus they're bringing that red format. I mean, you might want to be putting these containers in an area where you already have a lot of green. An area where you already have... Uh, you know, a lot of greenery going on. You're wanting to spark that color up with a Japanese maple. It's going to provide deep reds, maroons, and fiery fall color. And I would say Shana and Rhode Island Red are two of the most perfect small uprights. So if you're not looking to do a lace leaf, those are two of the easiest ways to get high impact maroon to bright red Japanese maples in container gardens. Okay, so we've talked enough about red. Everyone loves red, but if you're a collector of Japanese maples, you know there's so many amazing green cultivars out there. The lion's head Japanese maple. That is such a great container plant. Right. I, I, we, we couldn't not put this one on the list for uh, container gardens. It's always popular for bonsai because it's incredibly durable. It's on our heat tolerant list because it's incredibly durable. And uh, it, it makes sense to have it here in the container garden. I've seen some amazing bonsai done of Shishigashira. It lends itself very well to staying small in a container. It has unique habits, so it really kind of captures the curiosity there in the container garden works great in a fairy garden, but it also brings high intensity fall colors that you can have up on your deck in a shadier spot or a little bit more sun, really a great tree to be growing in any condition, but she makes so much sense for a recommendation for the container. That's one of the reasons I love it because it gives such a unique texture, but often you have to get a tree established and a larger tree before you get good fall color, which is harder to do in a container. But Shisha Gashira gives almost a consistent fall color almost every single year, even at at an early age. And that's, I mean, that's what makes it such a great plant. Yeah, mid-size vertical interest on this one too. So it's not going to be a small ball. You're going to get more of an upright shape with it. But that can be shaped and pruned and 
and and manipulated so easily. That's one of the reasons it's so popular for bonsai too is that small foliage. Uh, so it kind of works perfect for a container garden. Now, this next one's one we talked about in our recent podcast about most popular Japanese maples of 2022. If you guessed it, you guessed right. Makao Yetsubusa was our most popular tree uh, for sales here at our nursery in 2022. And for great reason, it's also the bomb for containers. Yeah, it just has that tightly layering habit. It looks like a little bonsai. I mean, you don't have to be a bonsai expert to grow this in a container and it look like a bonsai. It's going to do that naturally. It looks like a little creature that's alive out there with some bright chartreuse green leaves that are just layered like like shingles on a roof. And it's so unique with its habit, so unique with its form, that it's going to grab everyone's attention and really show off even in the small space in the container that you're growing it in. Hey, when I run into people that know me but don't quite understand what I do, I'd say the first question I get is, do you grow maple syrup? When <laughs> they see Mr. Maple, like, no. And the second most common question is, do you grow bonsai trees? And and that's an easy one because any tree we grow typically can be used for bonsai. People love that. Everybody remembers Mr. Miyagi. That's that's where most Americans' cultural reference toward bonsai comes from is through the Karate Kid movies, uh, oddly enough. But everybody remembers that, and, and it kind of sparks this curiosity in people. And one of the reasons Macaw was so popular is it has that bonsai-esque aesthetic on its own. I mean, it's a tree you don't have to prune into a bonsai but it's going to look like a small bonsai. So that's why it's perfect for container gardening. We can put this one in a container with good drainage, just let it grow and do its own thing. And aesthetically, it's going to have everything you like about that intricate, smaller overall tree. And again, this plant gives you some great fall colors of oranges to reds in the fall. So it's a plant that's just really unique all around. And even these Japanese maples in containers during the winter when they lose their leaves, they just have unique structures. As these plants mature out, they're going to be very unique, very different, and something that's even interesting to go out there and look at even during the winter month. So I'd like to use this next segment to kind of reiterate some common mistakes and things to avoid uh, with gardening with Japanese maples in containers. We certainly want to encourage this podcast. Uh, the podcast wants to encourage you to garden Japanese maples in containers, but we want to reiterate a few things to avoid just to give you your best success. Yeah, the, some of the most common mistakes we see with containers. One, the bowl of death. We mentioned this earlier. If someone puts a dish underneath their container or the container automatically comes with a dish underneath it, you better take that off because that water will hold too much water up in the container and will give you root rot and cause issues for your Japanese maple. Yeah, it sounds like a cop-out. People say, what do you think's wrong with my tree? And I'm like... Well, it's either too much water or too little water. <laughs> they look very similar. Oftentimes, you know, that tree that's getting too much water kind of looks like it got hit with a lighter. The foliage can be a little burned late summer, and it kind of it looks very similar to too little water, to be honest with you. It's definitely a water issue going on. And so those two, you know, right away people know which one it is, too. They're like, oh, uh, yeah, I've been putting a water hose on it for, you know, a lot of time each week. And so, uh, you know, I've been, it's been staying pretty soggy. We've been really hot here, so I've been overwatering. And so people know pretty quickly which of the two conditions has been created. But too much water and too little water can look very similar. Avoid the saucer of death at all costs. It is a it is a no no with Japanese maples, and uh, one of the no nos of the highest order. There you can you can avoid. Next, we've got invasive companion plants. We're talking about those grasses. We're talking about those Japanese yews. We're talking about anything that's got an invasive root system that you're putting in the container with the Japanese maple bad idea. Yeah. Keep, be conscious of that guys. It's, it's a simple mistake to make. Uh, you know, you find a plant you like, you stick it in there, but it's taking up too much of that root ball too quickly. Go ahead and avoid that. Next up, you know, we want to reiterate this one because it's super important. Uh, watch out for too much sun, especially here in the deep South, hotter areas, coastal areas. Uh, Japanese maples work great in containers, but too much sun can dry one out too quickly. It can change your conditions, especially late summer a lot faster than expected for people. Watch out for too much sun. If you have a Japanese maple in a container, you know, and it's in sun in the spring, that may work great. But think about moving that container to a shadier spot as it gets into the hotter part of your season. And then this is one that we hadn't mentioned too much before, but overwintering issues. We see this all the time, people trying to overwinter their containers in zone 7 through 9. If you've got a Japanese maple in 7 through 9, you know, in a container, likely it's going to be able to stay outside unless you've got a a weird weather pattern coming mm -hmm. in. Um, it It's going to be able to stay outside naturally all by itself. There's no reason to bring it in. 
you know, the best things to do, group your Japanese maples and containers together near each other. That way there's not a lot of space of airflow in between. Um, Tuck them back to a house, but make sure they're getting natural water. We often see people put them in places where they don't get natural water during the winter months. Under a patio or a deck where they get zero water. And they need water during the winter months, and they need to still need that drainage that they had whenever you put them out on your deck. Yeah, if you are if you're, have your Japanese maples in containers and you're storing them in a shed or a garage or under a patio, anywhere you're trying to keep them protected, and you have them in an area where they're not getting natural water, I recommend watering them at least two to three times a month minimum. Uh, you want to make sure it's drying out completely between those waterings. And it's ideal if you can get that to be once it's over freezing. So after a late freeze, then watering your trees in well as the temperature gets back above freezing. That'll give them some water to help, you know, recovery from those colder temperatures. Uh, sheds are a must or garages are a must if you're going to grow Japanese maples in containers. I have customers in zone four who grow Japanese maples and have good collections, but they're not going to be happy outside in the winter in a zone four in a container. It's, a, it's definitely a no. Uh, there's really not many cultivars that would even consider uh, trying that at all in zone five. So zone four is definitely a no for outdoor in the container. But, you know, your zone four customers, your zone five customers, you can keep those in unheated areas where they're protected. They're not quite getting that extreme winter condition. Uh, but be conscious of the water. And don't bring them into your house. Right. That's the, one of the biggest mistakes people make. Here's my entire podcast on growing Japanese maples indoors. Hey, today we're going to talk about growing Japanese maples indoors. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the entire podcast. People ask all the time, how can I grow my Japanese maples indoors? Just don't. <laughs> it can be done. I mean, people are like, well, I, I've done it with success. Like, yes, it can be done, but it's not a good idea. They have At, to go through a dormancy period. Right. You're just going to lead to more stress on the tree long term. Um, it's a much easier plant. They're a deciduous plants. So deciduous plants need a dormancy period. They need that time outdoors. They need those changing weather conditions and our indoor conditions are, uh, you know, like I said, Japanese maples work zones five through nine outside. Well, what are our indoor conditions? Everybody's indoor conditions can change a good bit. Zone 11 at least. Right. And you're not letting that tree maintain a proper dormancy for long enough. Um, I'll go ahead and push this one out here too. uh, grow lights, Big no-no with Japanese maples. They're not a grow light plant. Uh, Grow lights uh, are going to activate them in the winter months. They're going to force them into leaf. They're going to dry them out too quickly. They're going to provide too much direct light uh, that they wouldn't even be getting in the summer once that growth had hardened off. So you're exposing them to, you know, at minimum extreme summer conditions on that fresh spring foliage. So it's not a good idea to do grow lights with maples. I see people do that in Facebook groups all the time. It looks like you just hit the leaves with a lighter. Yeah, eventually, just eventually they're just going to crisp up and give up because you're, you're not going to be able to maintain the right water amounts to keep that happy. So with these common mistakes, what would you say is probably the thing you see the most? I mean, definitely the fishbowl of death, the uh, the saucer, the the pot with no drainage or the, the saucer is the most common uh, issue there. I see the saucer going on below the trees. I mean, I'll even... It's it's so easy to diagnose because people will send you a picture of the top of the pot and you're like, hold on, let's see the bottom of that pot. And uh, you, you can pretty much guess sometimes if it looks like it's showing a little burn that it's got a, a saucer down there, which is maintaining that water level through the entire container. Uh, one more thing I'll throw out here with the grow light, be careful of uh, you know sunrooms. You can grow a lot of plants in sunrooms. Um, Japanese maples can get that magnified sunlight in a container in a grow room. Uh, you just got to be careful with that too. That can that can overstimulate one in the wrong time of the year if they're if they're getting a lot of direct sunlight through a window. Uh, you know you're magnifying that heat on them. Yeah, that, that is one thing to keep in in mind as well. Well, we really hope that this podcast has really helped y'all learn more about growing Japanese maples in containers and container gardening in general. Japanese maples make such great trees for container gardening. It's a no brainer that. So many people would have such large collections of Japanese maples in containers. Right. One of the most popular things we would have at garden shows would be a lace leaf in a big patio planter. My mom loved making these up when we used to do garden shows. And she would have, you know, sometimes we'd carry 15 or 20 of these to a garden show. Tim and I would get tired of lugging them around, but we'd have these big plastic patio planters that mom would have some sedums from her yard in, maybe some hens and chicks, and, you know, a beautiful Anabas Shadari weeping over the sides of that, contrasting with that color. And it gave people a visual representation of what they could do with our three-gallon 
but they were also quite popular for people to buy the finished product because it's an easy way to grow maples. It's a popular way to grow them. And it makes sense why Veritrees was recommending it, you know, 30 years ago. I mean, it's something that, that makes perfect sense for the Japanese maple community to be gardening this way. Man, I, I love growing Japanese maples in containers. It's such a fun thing to do. Well, we really appreciate you all listening on today's podcast and really appreciate you all as listeners. We appreciate everyone on YouTube who's getting involved in the live chat as viewers. You know, we couldn't do this if it wasn't for y'all. Hey, if you haven't already, find us on your favorite podcast platform. Give us a five-star rating, guys. That goes a long way toward helping our channel. Definitely sub us on there as well. And if you're listening to us on YouTube, make sure to like our videos, subscribe, and share them. We love sharing this kind of content with gardeners. Uh, we really appreciate you letting us make this kind of content. And sharing it goes a long way toward allowing us to continue to do it. So we really appreciate that. And as always, if you really love what we do, make sure you support us by shopping on MrMaple.com. We're a small mail-order business in Western North Carolina. We ship all across the United States. We have over a 1,000 different varieties of Japanese maples, and we list at least 10 new varieties every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So get involved with that. Go to our website, MrMaple.com, and you can sign up today to get notified with all of our emails every single week. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.